Starting in about the mid-1980s, large wildfire years tended to coincide with years in which we had warmer temperatures. Now, when we crank the temperature up, that snow melt happens even earlier in the year. This year in particular, we had reduced snowpack compared to uh, the 30-year average. In fact, in the Sierra Nevada, the snowpack this year in March was about 50% of the 30-year average. And then we end up with a longer, drier, warmer fire season, which is more conducive to creating the conditions that allow these large wildfires to burn. Prolonged drought's a pretty significant player in terms of a lot of the wildfires that we see. So you can think of it kind of in terms of priming a pump. Well, with prolonged drought, what you're doing is priming the system to make it more flammable. And then the other side is that we've got uh, roughly a century of uh, fire suppression policy. And so now what used to be open forest is pretty closed canopy forest. So there's a lot more trees, a lot of smaller trees and when their branches reach the ground, they essentially act as a ladder for fire to move from the surface of the uh, forest up into the canopy of the larger trees. All it takes then is an ignition, and under those types of conditions, we're likely to see a higher probability of large wildfires occurring. So if we're looking toward the end of the century and our emissions go unchecked, and we see more frequent large wildfires, we do stand the possibility of seeing less forested area in the western United States.